I really like these, but maybe we can go bigger. I love wearable displays. Now, the folks at Rokid are sponsoring this video to chat about their new Rokid Max headset, which was just recently announced at Rokid's open day product launch. Also showing off some new software and AR apps. Rokid sent these along for me to get a little early hands-on time with. I love doing these videos on these displays because I'm basically just using this as a fancy teleprompter right now. All of my script notes are just in my field of view. You can totally do that lame influencer acting like really thinking about what I'm gonna say next, but I mean like my script is right here. <laughs> these are called the Rokid Max and I know I made that bigger joke in the intro, but they're actually a little lighter on my face than the Rokid Air I showed off earlier in the year. What if you could fit a huge gaming monitor in a shirt pocket and then put it on your face? I've been saying this a lot on my channel, but a portable monitor of some kind is one of the best accessories you can invest in. A screen that can easily move from a phone to a tablet to a laptop or a desktop, plug it into a game console, or to anything else that can send out a video signal. I cannot overstate how useful one screen can be for a whole family of other gadgets. Depending on your needs, you could pack something like this, or you can go with something like this. At this moment, I'm running this off of my Moto Edge Plus using Moto Ready 4, reading my script off of Microsoft Office. If your phone supports video out, you could just pack this as your whole computer solution and just add a little keyboard and mouse. I'm using a little Microsoft Ocean plastic mouse right now. The Rokid Max address almost every criticism I had of the original Rokid Air, and they managed to improve performance, and they're lighter on my face. The most immediate noticeable improvement, the birdbath optics project a larger image than the Rokid Air. In my office, the Air projected a larger image than my 50-inch TV from a distance of about 7 feet. The Max expand on that from a 43-degree field of view to a 50-degree field of view. It's even more like you're sitting in front of your own personal big screen screen TV projected wherever you might turn your head. It's a little tricky trying to compare because it's not just screen size. We've been seeing 200 inch TVs, things like that. You really also have to factor in the distance. So I'm less than two feet from a 27 inch art monitor right here on my desktop and the Rokid Max are projecting a slightly larger image at that distance. This is a product that's trying to build that experience of you sitting kind of in the middle row of your own personal movie theater. We know a movie theater screen is really, really big, but we're gonna watch it from a much farther distance than we have in our living room. Rokid keeps their defining feature from the air. We get individual diopters per eye that can be adjusted to help folks who are nearsighted. I'm just a touch farsighted, but the range of adjustment is even wider on this model, which should help more folks out. For me, it just goes instantly blurry, but playing around with those adjustments, I think we're also doing a better job of manipulating the image per eye, and I'm getting less fringing and flaring at the edges of this projection. And another major upgrade, we can't overlook these micro OLEDs. You remember how just like a minute ago I said, what if you could fit a huge gaming monitor in your shirt pocket? I mean, I shouldn't need to, but you can rewind the video if you want to hear me say it again. The, the, uh, the Rokid Max jump from a 60 hertz refresh rate to a 120 hertz refresh rate. And it's so nice. Like you're just doing the basics, you know, navigating around on your desktop or a laptop UI and it's so smooth. And then you fire them up for some gaming and it's just mwah. It's just beautiful, buttery smooth. Bumping up those hertz, bumping up those frames per second, that feels fresh for this iteration of glasses. We totally expect that kind of performance from a larger VR headset, but it's new for gear like this that's so portable. I'm also really happy that Rokid redesigned the lens housing. On the Rokid Air, we had this visor. Now, this was adjustable, but it took a screwdriver kit to pop out this whole visor if you wanted to go with something darker. The Macs are already a little more sunglass-style privacy dark. They they, uh, they advertise that less of the light of your image, what you're looking at, is actually going to be transferable out to people who are looking at what's on your face. But then, when you want more immersion, we just have this simple plastic cover that we can snap on and black out everything, which is a lot easier. Not quite as fancy as some of the competitors who are using magnets, but it's eminently practical and it's really quick to make that kind of an adjustment. All of this is pretty good for your eyes, but the Macs also get bigger for your ears too. The speakers built into the Rokid Air were practical. Sound did come out of them, but the speakers on these are noticeably louder and a lot fuller. <laughs> I get 
get so excited about these portable displays because I use them in a very straightforward and practical fashion. I'm, I'm really just looking at these as a portable monitor. Anywhere I look, I see a static big screen in my field of view. It's simple, it's straightforward. Most products I can put out video are going to play nice with this kind of an experience. And it's such a huge perk when you're traveling. Pop out something like a Steam Deck, get yourself all set up, find the most comfortable position you can, and your eyes see the screen. That's huge on an airplane or on some kind of commuter travel. I mean, the next time you're on an airplane, watch all the people around you and how they, they kind of hunch up over their gadgets. Sit back, relax, keep your Steam Deck in your lap, and then just kind of let your head rest wherever it's going to be most comfortable. But there is also an AR mode, which can be used with phones that output video from the USB-C port. Rokit has a full list of compatible devices. They've been doing a good job keeping that list updated. You can catch that on their website, and I'll link that down in the description. Installing an app on your phone, there's a separate AR interface that uses your phone as a pointer remote. I think this is still a bit rudimentary, but we are seeing a handful of new services and games available. Several of the games borked when I was trying to test out this headset, which is probably a compatibility issue moving from the Rokid Air to the Max, but you can play around with some of the head tracking in this mode. It's pretty simple. The UI just sort of stays put and as you move your head, you can look away or use individual browser windows that are placed at different distances. The apps and games install through the Rokid interface. You download an APK and install that. But genuinely, the feature I think most of us want in this mode is the ability to use the other apps on our phones that are already installed, but use them more like floating windows. It would be so handy if the AR mode here could be more like a desktop mode, like Moto Ready 4 or Samsung DeX. I don't have the same kind of positional head tracking when I'm using Moto Ready 4, but it's a bit more practical to have sort of more traditional desktop UI and having floating windows, and then just the whole field of view follows me here. I can't get to my other apps in the Rokid AR interface. When you can work through the Rokid browser, it is kind of fun to have video playing off on one side of your head, and you can kind of be looking or searching through another browser more in front of you, kind of look back and forth between those. There's a novelty there. It's kind of fun. I don't know that there's a practical use case that you're going to want to live in that environment, but it shows that there's still a lot of potential even for this more streamlined hardware. But a really critical upgrade for this generation, using those browsers for streaming media. The Macs support HDCP, so the copy protection on Netflix and other streamers is compatible here. And that makes those browsers a little more functional for streaming entertainment. Rokid's accessory game is also pretty strong. They sent me a full reviewer kit in a nice flashy box, which also had a neck strap. You can keep these from falling off if you move your head around a lot. We get an HDMI adapter, so you can use this with other devices that can't put video and power out through the USB-C. And of course, their handy little USB splitter, which I'm using right now with my Moto Edge. That way I'm not running down my phone battery to do more PC computer computer things and I can still properly supply power to these glasses. This has worked with all of the phones that I've tried so far that have video output, and you can also use a Nintendo Switch to also do the same thing, charge your Switch while you get video out. Unfortunately, this little adapter will not work with the Steam Deck. I gotta jump into this part of the video. I think this is worth highlighting for a bit here. I see numerous frustrated reviews, and I've gotten some really angry comments on my videos of these types of products from folks who are upset that wearable headsets don't work with their phones. Those comments and reviews almost universally blame the headset manufacturer and not the phone manufacturer. That main issue is phone manufacturers not adding the right hardware to output video and properly power accessories. That's not a Rokid problem, that's an Apple problem, that's a Google problem, and that's the problem of every company that only puts basic phone hardware in their phone's USB port. It's understandable because of the way we market powerful phones, but it's frustrating because that's a consumer education issue that a lot of reviewers will gloss over in their phone reviews. But it matters to people who want to use the incredible compute power of their phones for more than just scrolling through social media and doing the texting. It's so silly to keep buying crazy powerful phones and only doing basic basic phone things on them. But that also means we techies need to highlight those features which help people get more out of their phones. And we've had USB-C and USB 3 for a while now. It should not be this exotic to only support these headsets 
on the most expensive premium phones. And even then, it's not a guarantee that this stuff's gonna work. Even worse still, we're starting to lose this functionality on premium phones because we aren't doing a good job of talking about it. At the very least, we should help folks apply blame in the right direction. If you're mad that your super expensive iPhone can't power a USB flash drive without plugging it into a wall charger, you shouldn't blame the flash drive manufacturer for the iPhone being that limited in a basic, basic use of USB. I'm really excited though to see that many of these manufacturers are not just sitting on their hands and hoping the situation will get better. At their open day event, Rokid Station was also unveiled. It's roughly a phone-sized handheld computing device that can drive wearable displays. Instead of hoping more phones will give us the right hardware to use accessories like these, Rokit is delivering a more direct solution to power their glasses. Phones have never been more powerful than they are today. Even a good mid-ranger phone is ridiculous overkill for covering the basics. I am such a broken record on this point, but I really want to try and get this message across. There is a wide spectrum of solutions to add a bigger screen to the gadgets you already own. Portable monitor, we can look at laptop style docks, and then something a little more exotic, a little smaller, and a lot lighter. My entire life I've been influenced by the magic of science fiction. Someday we will have fully realized location interactive, graphics rich, augmented reality scaled down to glasses or contact lenses or plug it right into my optic nerve. Someday. I don't really want to wait for that though, and I'm not sure we can get there if we ignore all of the steps in between that will get us there. We shouldn't overlook an actual product shipping today that can do some really cool things. Wearable displays serve a different purpose than a VR headset. <laughs> They're a lot lighter than a VR headset. All of my videos need that little bit of soapboxing. That's the cranky rant out of the way as I anticipate some of the, uh, the more critical comments on this video. I... I just really dig these glasses. I think a lot of people out there would find some fun uses for these things if they gave them a try. A major thank you to Rokid for sponsoring these videos, these conversations, and I'll be looking at some updates and some new apps for wearable screens soon. Definitely a lot more that we're gonna be talking about. And don't be shy. If you've tried out some wearable screens or portable displays or laptop docks, how have you found the experience? What have you done with your gadgets and what kinds of gadgets have you paired them with? Drop us some of them hot takes in the comments down below and smash that bell icon on your way down. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos and subscribing to the channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you clicking links in the description, those of you hitting my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the multiverse. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy across the socials. I've been spending a bit more of my time on the Mastodons, sharing a few photos on the Flickr. Not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams or the Twitters these days, but I will catch you all on the next video.